Welcome back. While most fundraising efforts involve people simply donating to a charity, there are a few that involve a bit more work. Jack Haskins tells us now of a group of people who put themselves through a grueling experience to raise money and awareness. These strong-willed Lakeland College students are nearing the end of their 30-hour famine. Right now, they're playing card games to help pass the time. I got a, a huge wave of hunger around 10 o'clock this morning, um, and it gets worse with the smell of it. We were outside the calf collecting donations, and just the smell of it is like killing you. The participants raised money from pledges with funds going towards World Vision. It's all for a good cause, and it puts... I, it takes it a step farther than just giving money. It puts us in the in the shoes of the people we're giving this to. This is what they live with most of their lives, and so I. And this it was also a personal challenge for me to see if I could go 30 hours without eating. Peter Walsh is an instructor at Lakeland College. He's put himself through the pain of the 30-hour famine several times. It hasn't changed at all for me in the number of times I've done it. It's the same every every time. And actually, when you get to the 30th hour, very often you could probably go another day at that point because your body's already made adjustments. So you've gotten over it. Peter believes these type of fundraisers help people gain perspective on what's really important in life. There are really important things out there to make an impact on and, and helping others that aren't as fortunate and, and not through any fault of their own is a great learning experience for anybody but particularly for youth because they're going to carry that for the rest of their lives. So far, the group has raised $1,500. Jack Haskins, Newcap News. Well, if you saw a member of the Lloydminster Kiwanis Club at your workplace today, it was probably already too late. Their sheriff for the day was out, armed with arrest warrants to round up anyone who wasn't ready to pay their bail. In you go. The Kinsman Club held their arrest by request today. They started off early this morning and were expected to do brisk business by lunchtime. When I looked at the sheets earlier today, um, starting about 10.30 until later in the day, so 11 o'clock-ish, there was a lot of arrests coming in for then. Anyone could pay to have their friends or co-workers incarcerated, and then whatever they paid became the bail that must be paid to get out. Some of these hardened criminals obviously deserved it. Well, I was at the office and uh, my staff told me I was a nuisance. You're under arrest, you're charged with a exposure. <laughs> for one lucky restaurant worker, his staff all chipped in to see him get taken away in handcuffs on a bogus charge but he was gracious enough to take it all in stride. There's going to be payback for sure, if not this year, next year for sure. And for those unable or unwilling to raise the funds needed to bail themselves out, a lengthy stay in the Huskow was a certainty. Some of them, we have one gentleman in there and his bail would be very high, so he's just going to stay with us for the day. I owe, uh, how much do I owe? 400 bucks? And I'm not budging. And she's not budging. <laughs> all the money raised goes to support kids' programs, including the Kiwanis Music Festival. People were happy to pony up to see their bosses get their just desserts. Some of them when they get here because they're a little startled, a little rattled because they weren't prepared for this, they uh, run to the bank machine down the way and come in and pay their fine. And while it might have been a chance to kick back, many did opt to pay that fine and get back to reality. I thought about it, but I'm a little worried about how busy it's going to be over lunch, so I figured I'd better get back. Well, taking some live music at a concert or get taken back in time at an antique show. Both are on this weekend in the Border City. Heather Clegus has more on this week's What's Happening. The Border City Optimist Club gives you a chance to travel back in time this weekend. It's their 15th annual antique collectible show and sale. It's going to be held at the Wild Rose Pavilion. You never know what you might find there. Or maybe you've been doing some spring cleaning around your house. You found something unique, something that looks like an antique to you. You could stop there and find out what it's worth. Things get underway 10 o'clock, both Saturday and Sunday. And they'll be making some beautiful music at the Grace United Church coming up on Sunday. Lakeland College Conservatory's Adult Choir is hosting their spring concert. They'll have music from the 20s, from the 30s, the 40s, the 50s, and a few other selections for you as well. Every revolution needs a soundtrack, and you've got a chance to win one this weekend on What's Happening. A playlist for the planet, that's what's up for grabs. If you want a copy, all you have to do is email your name and daytime phone number to TV contests at newcap.ca. And we want to say thanks to John at Universal Music Canada for hooking us up with the music. 
And starting on Thursday, the Kiwanis Music Festival will kick off here at the Vic Juba Theater. They'll be hosting the band competition starting on Thursday morning. Well, whatever you choose to do this weekend, I hope you have a great one. I'm Heather Clegis, and that's what's happening. Finally tonight, scientific research shows good looks really can buy happiness. And no, this is not an April Fool's story. A review of studies from the University of Texas, Austin, shows that overall, beautiful people tend to be happier than people who aren't considered to be attractive. In the studies that included more than 25,000 different people, participants rated their own level of happiness and then had others rate their looks. Those who rated tops in outward beauty were consistently happier than those who ranked near the bottom of the beauty scale. Good looks even came with an economic benefit. Experts say better looking people often earn more, tend to have spouses who earn more too. The study, of course, did not address inner beauty. Changing one appearance in an attempt to be happy can actually have the opposite effect. Ooh. Carly, you're one of Lloydminster's most beautiful people. Oh, right? yeah. Is that story Aww. true? Or? Oh, yeah. Oh, geez. Can't, oh. I don't even have a comment. I can't even. But your life is pretty good. No? Yeah, it's just peaches. Are you, are you, are you blushing it's on peaches television? now. Maybe. Oh. Well, all right. Well, that's all the time we have to contemplate Carly's beauty. Thanks for watching. Good night. Wardrobe consultations and clothing provided by Cliff Rose for Clothes. 